What is going on kids? It is your doctor, Dr. Remy LeBeau, and I'm here once again in the x Lair to provide you my very deep and insightful reaction to the latest episode of The Gifted. We have The Gifted Season 2 Episode 13 air tonight, and I really like this episode. It wasn't like um, a fireworks type of episode, but it had a lot of really great character moments, and it really... I think it really uh, like emphasized what was good about what's good about the show, you know, like what the who the best characters are, like what situations bring out the best in them. And so, you know, kudos to The Gifted and to Jonathan Frakes. Uh, I noticed at the beginning of the episode that Jonathan Frakes directed this episode. For those of you that may not know who that is, that is number one from, <coughs> excuse me, from um, Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, he actually was number one throughout that entire series, and, um, Riker. Uh, something Riker. And, um, and then he wound up directing some of the episodes, and then he wound up directing some of the films. You know, there were four Next Generation films. The second one being First Contact, I believe he directed that one. And in my opinion, that's the best of the bunch. In fact, that's probably one of the best Star Trek films ever. And so, <clears throat> it was cool to see his name on this, and then, and now it's like I'm I'm kind of letting the episode digest. I'm realizing like the quality is in in part due to him. In part, it's due to like the writing and the momentum and where we're at in the season. But also, you know, the way you pull an episode off is important. And Jonathan Frakes pulled this episode off. Um, we had some interesting dramatic stuff going on that really, like I said help to bring forth some of the best character elements that the show is able to offer. Um, so we had a few different storylines going on. We had the father and the, the, the Strucker father and of course Lauren who's like struggling with her demons, struggling with becoming Fenris, Dark Fenris, which is awesome. We had um, Clarice Blink uh, be, be becoming part of the Morlocks, but realizing that she needs help from the underground, having to enlist the help of Kate, which then played in really great into the, the sort of backbone idea of the episode, which is about trust and how people that have been scorned and, 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 uh, and scarred by those that would fear and hate them that they trusted, that 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 sort of barrier is a difficult one to overcome if if it's even possible <laughs> obviously we had that great kind of little simple opening scene where erg is not just betrayed by a human but betrayed by a human that he apparently had a relationship with and potentially loved um and so obviously that was especially difficult for him to to deal with and that obviously led to him being completely incapable of of trusting another uh, another person that's just a normal human until this episode and so I really kind of felt that important kind of element of his character and the sort of the dynamic of him against you know humans against a particular human wh who's Kate um, having that kind of play out and then them no longer being adversaries in the end and then him giving her the honorary M on her cheek. I thought that was lovely. It's a lovely little touch, you know? Obviously, it's kind of weird. It's like, well, she's not a mutant and that's not a, that's not a tattoo or a cut in her face, but uh, sweet, you know, sweet little thing that kind of just gave that extra kind of, kind of, you know, special human touch to the that sort of arc that played out throughout the episode. So... I like that. I like everything that was going on uh, with Blink, him, and uh, and Kate at the clinic, and you know how things kind of like went awry uh, with the with the purifier showing up, and then you know Kate really like breaking out the badassery and just shoot shooting a motherfucker. Like she actually shot a guy in the gut. That was actually a little weird to me. Has she shot a person before? I feel like that's something that she needed to kind of like digest as a character because 
I mean, even though she's becoming this badass and I'm buying it, like this whole Linda Hamilton thing, and that's a Terminator 2 reference for you youngsters, um, she still, like, ha like, I don't think she's done that before. And, like, to, to shoot another person, potentially killing that person, I don't care who you are. I mean, that's a difficult thing to process. And so, you know, you, it, it, hopefully we'll have a moment in the next episode where she tells us, you know, um, her husband, I keep forgetting his name, Reed. Reed is his name. I'm getting the names finally. She, when she tells Reed that she shot somebody and there's like a moment at least where that's acknowledged as like a difficult thing and kind of like a turning point for her character. Nonetheless, um, I like that. Um, the only thing that didn't, I didn't like about that moment was when the guys were kind of flown where they were, where Ur did his bishop thing, where he redirected the energy and shot it out of his eye. Uh, he essentially, um, uh, the two guys were sent flying through a wall of, it seemed like paper or like really light cardboard, which is clearly a set. It's like, all right, folks, like I get you. You don't have the biggest budget in the world. Still, you know, you're gonna th you're, if you're gonna be flinging some guys through a wall, like make it seem like you're flinging some guys through a wall, you know, not this fake wall that you made just to have guys flung through. Uh, I get it, I understand, and I'm willing to forgive it because overall, like what I saw in this episode was great. But you know, it's like little things like that. Uh, th there's other little things, and I'll bring them up right now, and I won't bring it up again later. A lot of the background characters, you know, when when shows don't have a big budget, like the supporting characters wind up not being that strong. And you saw that with The Walking Dead, like the first few seasons, like all the main cast, like they pretty much had it, but anytime they would encounter like some like ancillary and not very important, like one or two line character, the execution of that would generally not be that great. Also, like you, you have characters like Sage and, the, and then the black dude that's part of this sort of like gang of villains that the Hellfire Club has has uh, uh, brought into the fold, they don't talk much. And they're always kind of there. I don't, I'm not comfortable with that, you know? Like, the girl and the guy of the, of the three in the Hellfire Club were talking, right? Like, the girl and the black dude were talking to um, uh, Polaris. And the black dude was just kind of like reacting to things. And I'm sorry, I don't know, I don't know what his name is. I'm going to call him the black dude. Um, but, you know, he's more than just black, obviously. But that's the way that he's easily identified. But anyway, quick side note. I'm very much about, um, you know, black folks like getting their due. And I support uh, any sort of efforts they, they have in this world to try to gain some sort of equality and justice for the injustices that have been caused against them throughout the last half a century, if not more. So that's my little side note on that. The black dude <clears throat> wasn't saying anything. It's like, no, have him say something. Have him say a couple of lines. Like, people don't just sit amongst other people and just like not say anything like especially if it's people that they know yeah there might be shy people that don't say things in general but when they're around people they trust like you know these two other people that they're in a gang with and they're willing to pull off like big uh you know crimes with like they talk during those times so you know like eh. also reva where was she again second episode without reva there's a couple of reasons why I think my, that might be the case. One, and it's not for story reasons. I'll tell you that much. Not for story reasons. One, they don't have the money to pay the actress to be there all the time. Potentially. Because they have so many characters and like they only have so much budget for each episode. And like someone like her who used to be on Empire, yeah, I'm sure she demands a relatively hefty price you know, for a television show. Relatively to, you know, what they're trying to accomplish and the, and the cast that they have. Um, and so I, maybe, that's a, that, maybe that's a burden for them. Another possibility is they just realize, like, she doesn't quite fit. You know? Like, you don't quite buy her as, like, this badass fucking leader. I think if we spend more time with her, we would, we would eventually, but I don't quite 
get that from her. So maybe they're like, well, they realize it early on. They're like, well, let's just try to kind of sideline her and really focus on what works, which is our main characters. And that I'm, I'm glad because that's what made this episode good. Like you had, of course, Lauren be central. Lauren is great. Like, I fucking love Lauren. Like, she's a great character, and the actress pulls it off wonderfully. And I totally bought this whole struggle with, like, you know, trying to, like, pull back from, like, giving in to the desire to be, you know, all-powerful. And obviously, that desire being amplified, the sort of titillating quality of it being amplified by the cuckoos. The cuckoos were fucking full-on cuckooing, and I was like, yes, motherfuckers, yes! Give me the cuckoos in the way that they should be represented. This is how they should be represented. Working together, powerful, relentless in their pursuit of, their, of what they're trying to achieve. Wonderful. So that was great. Andy in that whole situation. We didn't see much of Andy, but what we saw of him was true to the character and, and good. And it was really nice compliment to Lauren. And all of it worked. All of it worked in kind of enhancing, like, this whole sort of thing that was going on with them and Lauren and how it was affecting her and how she was also just kind of having her own personal <coughs> journey of discovery and how the father then needs to get involved and, like, Thunderbird helps to track her down and then they finally end up interacting and then there's, like, this sort of emotional standoff. You know, it wasn't. it didn't have to be huge big budget, all sorts of powers. It was just like, no, father-daughter talking about something that is important, you know? It's like, we're all vulnerable, right? Like, parents are vulnerable people, and children don't see that because parents are, are in part, intending to kind of purvey to them a sense of strength, right? So you, so you don't want to show your children too much vulnerability, right? And so, and so, for him to kind of reveal, like, hey, I'm vulnerable to temptation as well, and then share that with her as she's going down this dark path, like, it was just a really authentic moment where it's like, it all kind of worked, and it made me understand, like, why she would turn around, and then why she would wind up accepting to take the drug. Which is crazy, by the way. I can't believe she did that. Like, I want her to to be all-powerful and badass. Like, I want her and her brother to be Fenris. Like, I want that. And by the way, and I was thinking about this as I was watching the show, who would have thought? Like, let me pitch a show to you guys. Let me pitch a show. It's going to involve mainly Fenris, and then you're going to have Morlocks and the Purifiers and the Hellfire Club, and let's throw in Blink and Thunderbird, and it's going to work. If you pitched that to me, I'd be like, hells no. But clearly, like, they do not have their hands on the central characters that make up the X-Men canon because those characters are about to be given the royal treatment with the MCU. I cannot wait for that shit. Kevin Feige will deliver because he's a real fan. Kevin Feige, if you don't know, is the guy that orchestrates the MCU, and he was actually a production assistant on the first X-Men movies. And he's become what he's become. He's pulled off the x the MCU in the way that he has. I mean, Infinity War, there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better than that. Imagine him bringing the X-Men to the fold in a, a completely different way than that we've seen them on film and then having that like collide with what's happened in the MCU. I mean, it's just going to be incredible. I cannot wait for it. Clearly, this show does not have their hands on those central characters that are going to be given that awesome treatment. And so they had to make do with what they had, and they're making do. I'm all, I'm, this is a great episode. This is great. This is really great. And I haven't even talked about the Lorna and, um, and I'm, I was going to say Sunspot for those X-Men fans, because Eclipse is basically Sunspot. Why didn't they make him Sunspot? They brought Blink in from Days of Future Past. Why didn't you bring Sunspot in? Oh, because he had to fly. Because Sunspot flew. And that's expensive. That makes sense. That makes sense. But Eclipse is cool. I, I like Eclipse a lot, by the way. He's, um, he's, he's Sunspot Light. Just like that villain guy that he killed. And that, I'll talk about that right now. That he killed at the end is like was like Gambit Light. Oh, he can charge things up and have them blow up. It's like, oh, you mean Gambit? <laughs> oh, you mean Gambit? I was going to move the camera and show you my badass Gambit up here. My Sideshow Collectibles premium format Gambit. Oh, man, I love that thing. Um, but he's not. That guy is Gambit Light. And um, and so it's a lot about light, right? A lot, a lot of light. And that takes me to that 
whole sort of central thing that was going on with Eclipse. And this other girl that had light in her veins as well. I think, did they call her? What did they call her? I don't know what they called her. It was cool though. It was like glow or something. It was, it's a cool concept. And I like that they have this sort of similar blood thing going on and like, and how he was able to give her a transfusion. Um, and then during that time, like we saw him and, and Lorna hatch this plan to capture this Gambit Light and get him to talk about what they're planning to do. But, it, well, first of all, there was an interesting thing that happened in this episode, and I don't know how I feel about it. And maybe some of you experts can uh, jump in and let me know if I'm wrong about this, but I do not believe that Lorna Dane has ever had the power to manipulate technology. Now, the way it was explained, it sort of worked for me, but it also kind of didn't because you have Sage <laughs> right there, who I believe her power is mainly to be able to communicate with technology. And so it was sort of a strange thing that I had to digest. Now, is that something that, that we've seen in the comics? Not based on what I've read, but maybe you guys know something that I don't, and I'd be happy to let you tell me about that. So please do that. Um, she uh, apparently can do this based on what we were told in the show, and so she did, and she was able to find a <laughs> video of the guy coming back from a liquor store, and then that ultimately leading Sunspot to try to kidnap him. That going awry, the guy shooting him. We didn't see what actually happened in the car, but you would assume that light was emitted from Eclipse's body. That cut the dude down. Gambit light was Gambit lit in the opposite direction of, of what lit means today. Just like, <laughs> dead. And, um, and then he walks out of the car and he's like, he's He's, uh, he's leaking his, his glow, glow fluid, <laughs> and then uh, the car explodes. Pretty dramatic. The guy's dead. Pretty dramatic stuff. Three more episodes to go. So is, is this... <sighs> what I was hoping is that the mutants would unite against the purifiers, because the purifiers really need to be taken down. But what it appears is going to happen is that the the um, the underground or the hero mutants are going to be going up against the inner circle, probably to sh to save Lorna, who's now going to be exposed, perhaps potentially something along those lines. I'm not saying I'm not happy about the way things are going, but you know we'll see how that turns out. What I really wanted though was like Lauren and Andy to get together and be badasses. I hope this is just like. Like a, a just kind of a, a you know, like a, a quick stopper on like the eruption of them finally becoming what they're meant to become, uh, and we'll see that at the end of the episodes, at the end of the season, or maybe the father will turn, which is possible because obviously there is a ticking time clock here, and it is that um, that uh, supply of the serum that suppresses the the mutant power. So we'll see how that goes. Had some nice moments with Blink, uh, where she's just kind of processing being in the underground. I like that she brought Kate in, even though she knew Erg would not like it, and fought for Kate to be there so that she could save that mutant, um, whose name, again, I don't know, and she's not can canonical. Um, another, uh, uh, something I have to mention, the missed opportunity of finally having a meeting of the underground. Like, you, all the leaders were dead, so you had some, like maybe the, the new leaders of each sort of sect of the underground meet up with uh, Thunderbird and Eclipse. and That felt like something that could have been epic and could have had like some really great characters associated with it, but unfortunately um, that did not happen. And, uh, and so we wound up with a very kind of forgettable moment. And that, that was, that's just, again, the ref a reflection of the show not having the budget to really do what it could do. But again, those are, th th I've mentioned the drawbacks, and I am always going to mention the drawbacks because I'm not going to watch these shows with rose-colored co rose colored X glasses just because I love the X, but I'm not simply going to forgive the show for its deficiencies. I'm going to call them out. 
And maybe, like, the writers will do something about it. I doubt it. I doubt they're watching this, but hopefully somebody can let them know, hey, try to do better. I know your budget is limited, but try to do better. Or fight for more money, folks. Fight for more money. Make this show as legendary as it can be. Or let's just wait to see what Marvel is going to do with the X-Men, their own characters. Anyway, this show is, is good. We have three more episodes. I'm excited to find out what's going to happen. Um, I'm concerned about the show. I haven't heard anything about a renewal. I don't hear anybody talking about this show. You know, you hear people talking about um, The Punisher coming out and, like, Daredevil Season 3. Um, even, like, the, uh, the Elseworlds crossover on the CW-verse. But I don't hear anybody talking about this show. And it's unfortunate, and hopefully that doesn't mean that it doesn't, it's not getting enough ratings to make it to the third season. I was thinking, as I was watching, I was like, because they brought up the X-Men again, and, like, and then Lorna had that cool moment where she was like, where she was telling Gambit Light, like, do you know who I am? And like, she said, like, I'm Lorna Dane. And she didn't fucking say I'm the daughter of Magneto, but she should have said that shit. Who's with me? She should have said that. I'm the daughter of Magneto. How dope would that have been? I, I, would, have, I would have had goosebumps for days if I had that moment. Hopefully that happens at some point. But I was thinking, season three, it's got to tell the story of the X-Men. Like, what happened to the X-Men? You know? Like, they at some point have to explore that. You can't just have that, that open and, not, and it not lead to anything. Because the X-Men aren't dead. You know, maybe they're in Australia like they were in the comics when they were presumed dead. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Give me something, show. Give me something. Nonetheless, episode, I liked it. Looking forward to the next three. And uh, that's all my thoughts for this one. Uh, thanks for checking out my video. Thanks for checking out my channel. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, click on the subscribe button down there. Keep up with my videos. Or else you're not going to know what I think about what happens next. Uh, if you liked the video, click like. If you didn't like the video, click you didn't like. Um, if you want people to watch this and feel that it's something that people would enjoy, share it. Share the video on social media. Let people know, hey, there's this guy. He's really into X-Men, and he's talking about the gifted. Come on down. Listen to him talk. It'll be a good time. Um, and as always, I want to remind you that if you haven't already, you better put an X in that box, ladies and gentlemen, because ain't nobody checking me. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.